Hi, this is Sam Botstein for TractorSkills.com. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all of our tractor tutorials and check us out at TractorSkills.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at the dedicated Filter 92 effects within Tractor. These effects are all based on the filter circuits from Allen & Heath's Zone 92 mixer. While most DJs will already be familiar with a typical DJ-style filter, which is low pass in one direction and high pass in the other, these filters actually have a lot of character despite being built-in DSP filters and can move quite a bit beyond the capabilities of an ordinary DJ-style filter. In order to better understand the pulse and the 92 LFO, we're going to first take a look at the vanilla filter 92 effect. Now, one thing that you might notice right away is rather than a high pass and low pass knob, which you can actually access by pressing this third button for a DJM style. Rather than just having high pass to the right and low pass to the left, we actually have a dedicated low pass and high pass knobs. Now these go in the, the directions that you would expect from DJing with a combination filter knob like that. So the high pass filters out the low frequencies and the direction of the high frequencies as you turn it to the right. And the low pass filter does exactly the opposite. It filters out the low end from high to low as you turn it to the left. Now, one thing that you'll notice right away is this other knob, the resonance pot, is something that you don't actually necessarily have access to on most DJ mixers. So this actually, all by itself, really gives us a lot of options in terms of performance with this filter. So even if we just ignore the high pass entirely and we work entirely with the low pass, you'll hear that there's a lot more range of tone available with just the resonance pot and this low pass filter. So as you can hear, the resonance control gives a whole new dimension to the use of a low-pass filter. Now using all three of these knobs together, we're actually able to carve out a band, a specific frequency range in between the low-pass and the high-pass filters, and control its tone with the resonance. In this particular example, it should be really very clear how the resonance works. You can hear that we have almost nothing to hear because the low pass and high pass are so close. But as soon as we turn up the resonance, we're actually able to carve out a whole new dimension of the sound that we weren't able to hear before. It should also be really dramatic when we activate this BRJ button, which turns us from a band pass kind of effect where we're passing through one particular band that we've carved out to a band reject, meaning that we're going to hear everything but those frequencies in between the low pass and high pass. Here's what that can sound like. So this is a really dramatic effect potentially. We're actually able to carve out almost to the point of not being able to hear anything and we're able to drop everything else using this band reject. So doing this, you're actually able to move beyond baseline swaps, where you essentially bring in the bass from one track and bring out the bass of another, you know, very, very common mixing technique, to actually being able to swap any part of the frequency range. When you start messing with remix decks at the same time, you're actually able to 
really have an unprecedented level of control over what part of a track is being dropped at which particular time. The last control that we need to cover on the filter 92 is the reset. Now, all of the filter 92 effects have this reset, and it's important to pay attention to the fact that everything moves when you press it. So when you press reset, all of the knobs change position, the effect turned off, and all of these knobs were deactivated. This can be really important because we can actually get to some sort of jarring places with this. For one thing, our controller will react with soft takeover, meaning that when I hit reset and I have this control turned all the way up to 100 and it turns it back down to zero, when I turn the knob back, it's going to jump to the next change of position of that knob. Let me show that again. So this pot could potentially present a problem whereby instead of trying to, oh, okay, let's go back to the beginning and slowly ratchet it up, we either have to turn the knob really fast or you know, move between the dry wet being on or something to avoid that. Luckily, this reset button will actually turn the effect back off for you. So if you're in that kind of situation and you press reset, you would actually have to turn the effect back on before you started to have the soft takeover become an issue. Moving right on, we're going to actually take a look at the filter 92 pulse. Now, the pulse might be really hard to get one's head around unless you just think of it as a filter connected to an envelope follower. Now, if you're not familiar with what an envelope follower is, just imagine the waveform or the contour of the volumes of the sounds, and then know that this effect reacts to that. This is why in the manual it describes using music with gaps in it, like a drum beat, like what we're using here. Otherwise, it's harder to hear the filter sweep. Let's listen to this filter 92 pulse for a second. So you notice that with everything at center here, and with the dry wet all the way up, when I turn it on, we hear no audio. This is an important thing to know. It would not be fun to try to drop this in the middle of a mix or something and just have your track come all the way out. So this amount knob actually centers around zero. When you turn it to the right, the filter sweeps go up, and when you turn it to the left, they go down. So the actual sweep of this knob has a very smooth effect in either direction, but when changing directions or moving from zero to anywhere in the negative range, it's a really jarring change from hearing absolutely nothing to hearing essentially the whole frequency band swept. This is something to pay a little bit of extra attention to if you plan on going in this direction. Once again, we have the resonance control available to us, which will really make the sweeps a lot more dramatic. This peak mode button here will actually allow us to enable the peak sensitivity. So the peak sensitivity moves us from a 50% peak sensitivity to 80%. This is a very dramatic difference. Let's hear that right now. Notice that the third button, the peak mode, enables the second one, peak sensitivity. Once again, we have a reset button here, which will actually set everything to a specific position and turn the effect off. And on a control X1 or a similar control scheme, we will actually have to rely on soft takeover to set the controls once again. 
this particular pulse effect sounds really good at levels other than where I've been demonstrating it. I've been showing it at 100% just so you can hear better, but at 50 or less, it can be a nice subtle thing to add. This can be a nice effect to use in combination with another filter or the channel filter as it sort of sweeps out ranges of the audio more gradually than a really dramatic filter sweep on just the channels filter. This soft control is essentially a overall control for the whole envelope follower. It affects the sort of contour of the filter sweep. Let's hear some different positions of that. In its far left position, it's very sharp. In its far right position, it is very soft. The Filter 92 Pulse effect in its entirety is a really good choice for any kind of buildup or non-transitional situation, and in terms of transitions can be really excellent in house and techno music, or possibly electro house, where filter sweeps are common within the music and are very welcome in the mix as well. Finally, we have the Filter 92 LFO. Here we have a shape rate, which sort of controls the shape of the modulation. We have a rate control, which controls the rate of the modulation. And we have our resonance control. So with this all the way on, we should be able to hear some pretty obvious filter LFO effects right from the beginning. The faster modulations are excellent for scratching, and in free running mode, which you can activate by pressing this third button, we're actually able to bring this rate very, very, very high. The free running mode of this rate knob is actually very useful for any situation where you might be spinning real vinyl through live input or, or really just not using Traktor for its sync and tempo detection capabilities. This is reliant on your master clock, so if you set the track that you've correctly deep gridded to be the tempo master, this rate should match up as long as the free running is not on but it can be awkward to have a tempo sunk rate that is not sunk to your tempo. So the free running can be very, very useful for that. It can also be excellent for scratching as you're able to get some very, very fast modulations. It almost sounds like a scribble scratch already, and when you combine it with any sort of digital vinyl manipulation, you have some really dramatic effects. We have the resonance pot from before, and in combination with very fast modulations, we can get really interesting self-oscillations, which move across most of the frequency range. Once again, we have a reset knob, and we also have a shape knob, which controls the shape of the modulations that we'll be hearing. Finally, the up button will allow us to invert the direction of the modulation 
rather than starting by going down, it's going to start by going up. When you use these effects together, you're able to get some really interesting, destructive, transformative kind of audio out of it. When you found a sweet spot, the dry-wet controls can be very transformative in and of themselves, as in this case we're introducing filter properties with every turn of the dry-wet knob. So let's leave them at 50% and turn them up all the way, and you can see a really clear and unusual way to mix out a track. <laughs> 